I guess this episode was much needed after the previous episode, the one that got this damn call, nutrition on silent. So I got it. You always gotta be active when I'm doing something. Bad phone. Anyways, where was I? Oh, yes. Last episode opened everyone's eyes to watch the series. It's a shame that some are just now watching it when it's almost completed. Just saying. Well, anyway, with that being said, I'm glad people now have their eyes on this episode. I knew that episode was get everyone's attention, even though there are other dark episodes that also happened in the past. And not only that, but also, if you read the manga, there's, well, not much thing you're translated to the manga because there's no licensed. And it's hard to find a line up, the novels as well. But yeah, like I said before, the series can get really, really dark. That being said, it was great that we took a little time off the edge and went into something more deep diving into the two teachers, um, Fran and Sheila. You know, uh, not much I really want to say about it, really. It was just another adventure of their past. But what I do want to talk about is how their teacher was not gay. I can't help but laugh every time I say that name. Her name is literally is Nike. Why? <laughs> what, what, uh, <laughs> I can't help it. It's just it's the way it's spelled. You help to say Nike. And that's how you say it. So this witch is named Nike. And if only she knew in the parallel universe, our world, that her shoe, her, that her name is based on a giant brand that have enslaved forced labor to make their products. I wonder how she would feel about that. Yeah. But it's interesting how we get more close to the how small this world is, where Elena would grow up reading the, the journeys of Nike throughout her entire life. She's like her big fan. And to, could, to actually stumble upon one of her apprentices, Fran, and become her apprentice is very interesting. And of course, coming in contact with Saya, who came in contact with Shia, Sheila, and they all, in a way, met each other throughout some point of time. Which is very interesting. I guess my idea of um, Nike being related to Fran is throughout the window. It's probably they're from the same country and they just have that kind of hairstyle there. There's a big possibility that's the case. But then, of course, the two teachers knowing each other and them being polar opposites, but yet the same at the, at the same time. They have, you know, similarities. To be honest with you, I wasn't really that interested in the story. I've seen this kind of thing before, tons of times, where two opposites come and they have to, you know, work together like a, you know, like a cop buddy movie or something. Where one is by the rules and one is kind of a tough guy. That kind of thing. We did it through witches, and you know, it was just um just getting along with their teacher and each other. I was more interested in Nike herself, about the mystery behind her. You know, when... So, I guess I was wondering why the similarities between Elena and Nike were. I was making these ridiculous theories, but... I was wrong, you know? It was mainly them being from the same country or something, probably. So, what is there to really talk about about this episode, really? To be honest with you, not much. Besides, it was kind of entertaining, you know, them fighting against the people who are robbers and then they're trying to make witches look bad and stuff, but it didn't work. No one really hate the witches in the, in that area. They just were afraid to come in contact with them because of the bandits there, you know, like that. Then, of course, they accomplished their mission and one became a teacher and one be joined the Magical Association. They both took on apprentices, which know each other, by the way. Of course you know that. 
And speaking of Prentice, Sheila gave Sai a box to deliver. And something's inside the box. And it caused Sheila to panic. And now they have to go fetch down Sheila, mommy and Saya. And at the same time, um, Elena is also on her way. So we're getting, you know, to the end game. Because we only have a couple episodes left. So we're going to see what's going to happen. We see these four witches meeting each other. Now, the last thing I want to talk about. Well, besides the gorgeous scenery, the only thing that threw me off was them CGI seagulls. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> I'm used to seeing CGI in this show, but it's at least decent. But seeing them seagulls, do you really need to CGI them damn seagulls? Are you that lazy? <laughs> Boy. It's, it's bad enough I see that freaking, um, that, um, that, that water wheel from When They Cry, Higurashi, the new one, when you saw CGI, and you're like, why are you that freaking lazy? Yes, I know they work hard, but while you're drawing, you know, at least draw in a moving image. Like, Jesus Christ, man. I feel like when people are using CGI for some things that don't need CGI for, it's ridiculous. You don't need CGI for the freaking seagulls, especially when you're in the scene for only for a couple of seconds. Come on, man. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Now, where was I? I got off point. I see Elena as her cheerful self again. And it was to do with the many flaws of the series, I'll be honest with you. The series has flaws. It is how the characteristics of each character aren't consistent with the story of what they see and go through, you know? It's like where they see, they just brush it off. And they go on to the next episode as if nothing happened, which I was afraid of might happening. After the last episode that we saw, I thought in the next time we see Elena, she would have a different kind of attitude. You know, something to show like, dude, I just went some fucked up, you know. But no, she seems alright. She's on her way to where Welks is and she seems happy. You know, like, really? We're not going to do that. No development. None of that. And that's one of the problems with the series. I know people hate when you spew negativity about a series that they like. But you got to do it because that's my that's what I do. It's not my job. I need to pay for this shit. <laughs> um, yeah. There's no true character development of any of the characters, really, to tell you the truth. Not at all. People kind of stay the same. Whatever happens last episode doesn't really affect them the next one unless they're meeting someone. And that's pretty much it. No true growth. It's interesting to see some flashbacks with their backstories. Sure. But that's it. I want to see where they're going. Not where they came from. Yeah, it's good to see where they came from. But you're more interested in seeing where they're going. See what they grow as a character. And I thought what a lot, of, a lot of people thought that this would be... A chance for her to be sad a little and and slowly get over it. I seem like she's it's like that. She's over it. And I'm like, really? How disappointing. Hey, okay, what are you gonna do about it? So anyway, that's like got for this episode. Like I said, not much really happened, but you talked a lot anyways. Mad, whatever. It's just I don't know. I expected more. I guess. But that's what you get from expecting. You can expect that this means it's going to happen. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, what do you think about this episode? You know, maybe you know Elena and her not changed attitude, which really rubbed me the wrong way. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, you like my content, like, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit that bell icon. This has been the background on Madman. Signing out.